Kaylin and welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would do a different type of video today because it's almost back to school. So I thought I would do a video on my tips for surviving STEM and making it to graduation. So for those of you guys that don't know or for the people that are new to my channel, I went to Purdue University from 2011 and I graduated December of 2015 and I majored in mechanical engineering technology. Okay, so my first tip and honestly like this is the most important. Go into it with the mindset that you're going to succeed. STEM is not easy, but honestly I think the most important thing is having that mindset because me personally, I went to an all girls high school and our focus was liberal arts and basically art. So our sciences weren't super heavy, neither were our maths. When I got into STEM at Purdue, I was taking math classes that I had never heard of in my life. In my whole life, I was always a decent person in math. I wasn't super, super strong in math and I wasn't bad in math. I was just always that person just in the middle. So literally having that mindset is what helped me make it. My next tip is to do extremely well on your homework so that you could fail your exams. I know that sounds terrible, but homework is the only thing that you could take home. You could get help from your friends. You could get help from your teachers. Homework is the only thing where you have like all the resources around to excel on. So usually the exams that we took were somewhere between 45 to 60% of our grade. So let's just say you got an 85% average on all your homework. That means Percentage-wise in the class, you're at 42.5%. That means all you need is 17.5% more to get a D in the class. So on this exam, all you would need is an average of 35% and you could pass the class with a D. These are survival tips, y'all. Not tips on how to get the best grades. These are survival tips on how to make it to graduation. And when I was speaking on homework, I'm kind of incorporating lab in that too because at, at least at my school, lab was kind of included in like homework, quizzes, lab. They were all different percentages that made up the 50%. Okay, my next tip is to go to class. Like y'all, go to class for real and take notes in class. Now for me personally, honestly, going to class was easy. I was the type of kid who Every day in grade school, every day in high school, I was there. Like my parents were not playing. They wanted me to be in school. I had to be sick as a dog to miss a day of school. So when I got to college, honestly, getting up and going to class was easy. Go to class, take notes. And honestly, class is where you're gonna meet people in your major. So if you're in this big lecture, if you're in this small class, talk to the person next to you and be, oh, like, did you understand this? What he say, like make friends. And one thing that was cool with me about majoring in STEM is one, I'm black, and two, I'm a female. So I stood out. So best believe whatever lab I was in, the teachers knew who I was. Whatever lecture I was in, they saw me. But it's good that they notice me because when they see you there every day, that at least tells them that you're trying, like you want to succeed. You're coming, you're trying to learn, like you put in toward that effort. So whenever it gets down to that point where you're on the cuffs between a B and a C or a C and a D, that teacher, if you go to the teacher and talk to them, they'll recognize you and be like, you know what, this person came to all my classes, she actually tried, she wasn't disruptive, and I'm telling you y'all, I know this firsthand. I lived in office hours. Another tip is to check your school portal where you see your grades or whatever. Check that as often as you check your social media. And that's because this will always keep in the back of your mind, dang, like, I got a homework assignment that's due on this day. I could prioritize and study on this day, do this, da da da. But that's gonna always keep in the back of your mind school. My next tip, this is another super important one, is make friends in your class. I think everybody has this mutual understanding that we are all just trying to make it. So honestly, speaking for STEM, it's pretty easy to make friends. So y'all, making friends is extremely important and honestly, other than mindset, making friends was probably the second thing that helped me graduate. Cause I got help from so many people within my major that it's crazy. Okay y'all, this is the third thing that I think is most important. This is another reason why I graduated. 
You know at the beginning of the school year when the teachers always tell y'all, I don't give no extra credit, don't ask, I'm not giving you guys any, I don't do extra credit. Make sure that you go to their office hours and ask for extra credit. And when they say no, just go the next day and ask for extra credit. Yeah, I ain't care, I had no shame. But yeah, go to your teacher's office hours. If anything, they'll be like, bring your homework tomorrow or did you work on the homework? Let me see what answer you got. And like I said, just you coming to their office hours just puts in the back of their head, like this person was really trying. I'm gonna give this person the benefit of the doubt. It's all about perception. Another tip, do your absolute best freshman year. There's a lot of people that go into college freshman year and they just wild out. As you know, just through grammar school, high school, it's hard as hell to pick up a low GPA. You could start off high and it could slowly trickle down, but it is so hard to bring that low one back up. Starting off strong my freshman year is what was able to keep my GPA pretty high. Freshman year is when you take it the super easy um, general courses that you could do really well in. And the best thing about college is the fact that every single class they start from the beginning. And a lot of y'all know when it comes to math, once you fall off, it's over. Like math is really hard to catch up in and I'm sure a lot of y'all know that. So as far as math, I would say make sure that you are always following. Like, and keep in mind, I'm speaking based on like engineering and technology. Like not everything in STEM is like math related. Another tip is to stay on campus. As you know, in college, all of your classes for the most part aren't gonna just be back to back to back to back like high school or grade school. In college, you might have a two hour gap between each class. You might have a one hour gap between each class. Most people stay on campus if they have like a one hour gap, but if you have like a two or three hour gap, a lot of people might go home and come back. I suggest like if you have like a two hour gap, maybe even three, you stay on campus. Go to where your next class is gonna be and just sit in there and study, um, do your homework, and get that out the way. And also, if you just like sitting in that building, there are other students that are sitting in that building too, waiting for that class because they didn't want to go home either. They had a one hour gap or whatever too. So that's another way to make friends when every day, like this person is sitting here too, waiting on their class. Go to the library, go to your teacher's office hours and get help with your work. Like, it's so many things that you can do within that two hour gap other than go home. This is my number four biggest one for me. Do internships. An internship is actually what landed me my first job. Jobs are not just looking for somebody with a 4.0. Jobs are looking for people with experience. Literally, once you get a job, you could work there for a year or whatever. Every job that you get after that is not asking for your GPA anymore. It's in the past. All they care is that you have a degree and you have experience. I ended up getting my internship not because I had the highest GPA, but literally because the person liked my personality. My resume, I didn't really have much on it because I never had an internship before. And through that first internship, I got a lot of experience. And since I interned there, I did end up working there like after I graduated for my first year. And then after that, I dipped and now I'm at the company that I'm at now. I got my first internship junior year, but I went to career fairs every year from freshman year, but I didn't get my first internship till junior year. And then my last tip is to go to career fairs starting freshman year. Now freshmen, I will tell you, do not get a lot of internship. It's hard to get an internship as a freshman because a lot of people are like, okay, well you were just taking like basic general courses. Like you really haven't gotten into your real engineering courses yet. Or like you don't have, you don't even have a GPA yet. So it's really hard to get an internship your freshman year. Sophomore year, people start getting internships. You really get them like junior, senior year. But I say at least go freshman year so that you can get the experience in interviewing and having like that 10 second elevator speech. Even if you get rejected, just take that as an interview experience. My first time going to a career fair, I was so nervous to talk to people, especially since I really didn't have any experience. So it's like, well, what can you do? Nothing. But since freshman year, you don't have anything under your belt, 
you kind of like learn how to like gas yourself up. You're gonna learn how to gas up certain qualities about yourself and make it seem like it's bigger than what it really is. So like I said, even if you don't get an internship freshman year, even if you don't get one sophomore year, take that as interview experience. Those are my tips on how to survive STEM.